You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is the sales energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets successful, successfully, successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Boom! That's exactly it. Do that. Let's do that. I got to stop getting so excited when I hear that. <laughs> it's so good. You, right now, I don't care. Well, yeah. unless you're driving. And if you're yeah. watching live hey, yeah. and you're driving, thank you. Get your hands up. Right. Yeah, I mean, right. That you just feel better. You right? know, we, we do that in all the shows that, you know, the live shows that we do. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with doing it in your living room. You just feel better in your in your living room doing it that way. I just had the best apple. It's like one of those. If you ever if you ever have an apple and you like take a bite and you and then you don't have to bite the bottom part because it kind of just peels off. You know, like and, and it's like crisp. It's like the it's the best apple. I mean, you, sometimes you think that it was like made just for me. It was that it was just that good. I don't think I've ever thought that hard about eating an apple. Um, oh. and analyzing it, but somehow I think you could turn that into a LinkedIn video. You got to enjoy. I mean, life is about simple pleasures. You know, it is. It's it's the little things that you, you know, the amount of enjoyment I get when I check something off my list. I mean, it, it shouldn't be allowed. My grandmother, quick story. Now, my grandmother was a, just a great woman. And um, she, towards the end of her life, it was like the last week of her life, you know, Grammy, what do you want? Anyway, so we made a, a pot roast and she got to the, and she just loved the pot roast. And she uh, got to the point where she really couldn't swallow anymore. It was, it was really close to the end. And so uh, we made this roast and everything's good and the gravy's there. And then all she did, she took a piece of uh, rye bread, Jewish rye, you know, fresh, dipped it into the gravy. I haven't thought about this in years, dipped it into the gravy and just to watch her eat this thing. And she it, like her head went back and she just like and she savored it. And then she said, nothing should be this good. Like it was like pure heaven. That's wow. what life's about. Simple little <laughs> pleasures of finding pure heaven. Like when you're on a sales call and, you know, I, I know I'm equating a bunch of different things. But man, the whole process is supposed to be fun. The whole process, when you're done with it, you're like, man, I can't believe I said that, or I can't believe I did that, or, you know, you want to have stories at the dinner table. Well, and and it's about mindset when you get into that call, right? And and I think, um, you know, you talk about this all the time. You know, you're you're going to hit those dials for, you know, every day. You've got a list. You're checking off the, the calls. And sometimes you're in the zone. Sometimes you just got to get those reps in and you may get 13 calls. And that 14th call is the one where you're you're hitting it. Right. But that mindset getting through those 13 is key, especially when you're making cold call. And today we've got a guy on the show that this is called a segue. By the way, Dan, that's, that's what we, <laughs> that was, you're a master. What can I say? Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying. I don't know when you're going to come up with an apple or a grandma story. So <laughs> I have to I have to get to our guest because uh, this is going to be this is going to be pretty awesome. So would you please welcome to uh, Dan Jordan live? Um, this is uh, this is exciting for us. Uh, this is uh, an engaging sales speaker, uh, the interim sales director. And, you know, him as the UK's most hated sales trainer, please welcome Mr. Benjamin Dennehy. Well, you see, that's how you know you have a real winner when you don't have to remind him to put up his arms. That was great. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me on. 
Well, we're so glad to have you from across the pond. This mm. is very exciting for me uh, on a couple levels. But we, we talked about, um, you know, the sales process and, you know, making it fun the whole the whole way through. And you said yeah. uh, Chris had talked about, you know, making a bunch of calls and then maybe the 14th call. But there's a way uh, to make even the ones that say no to you satisfying like before you get to the 14th and they're really good and uh, I, there's very few youtube videos that i that i laugh out loud when i see them and yours was one so thank you for the laugh are you welcome <laughs> i uh, try to make selling fun um i think salesmen overcomplicate it uh, they make it too challenging and difficult for themselves and if you're not laughing on the way to the bank then you're doing something wrong well, that's yeah, terrific. So, how how did you? I got. We can get into your style and all that stuff and all that stuff. But how how did you? I was. I love this this part. How did you like get into sales and and this little niche? Like, what was? Well, well, like anybody in sales, I fell into it. Nobody wants this for their life. I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, you, you ask the average. I mean, I did. I gave a speech to two hundred business owners about eighteen months ago. I think it was in a room full of uh, business successful people. I said, "How? Put up your hand if when you were at school and your teacher said, what do you want to be when you grow up?' Put up your hand if you said salesman. Not a single hand goes up." Isn't it fascinating? If most people, with the exception of a handful that I've met in my life, virtually everyone who's in sales is there by default, not design. They went to university. They dropped out of school, whatever it was, and they suddenly found themselves in a position where they needed a job. And they figured they, figured they couldn't do a lot of things, but who's always hiring? Salesmen. Salespeople wanted. If you don't dribble in the interview, you could wear a suit, you could string a sentence together. You're qualified, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, so you're qualified to get hired. Hired, yeah. But and you're not you're qualified to succeed. Yeah, exactly. And what happens is is most salespeople who start off tend to do all right in the first three to six months because they're new, they're keen, they don't know what the hell they're doing, so they tend to be naturally better at asking questions and being inquisitive, so they do well. What happens is, is they plateau out, and most salesmen just get stuck and erupt. You know what a rut is? It's a coffin with the ends kicked out, yeah? So they just, <laughs> and they're just stuck in this place. And they're just like, a, I say, most salesmen are like washing machines. They're static and go around in circles. And they don't achieve a hell of a lot, yeah? Oh, so, my gosh. I'm brutal, I know. But no, I, this is great. This is exactly I love it. Right. I'm, I'm going to use that. A rut is a coffin with the sides, with the ends kicked out? Is that yeah, the ends yeah, kicked out? Yeah, 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 it is. And that, that's most salesmen. Uh, and they're stuck in a pattern of doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for a better outcome, but they're pretty happy with average. So then how have you been able to overcome uh, that, uh, that boyish charm of yours, uh, that inquisitive charm to go ahead and keep on asking questions and keep on being excited by it? So I've had the benefit. So I, I fell, like I said, I fell into sales and what I was naturally good at was setting meetings, getting appointments. But like most people who find themselves doing something and it just naturally happens, people would ask me, particularly my employers, you're good. Why are you good? So I, I don't know is the honest answer. I don't know, but I do do know certain things seem to work, but I don't know why. And one of my clients actually said to me, he was the uh, CEO of an advertising agency. He said, if you can figure out why you're good, I think you'd make a lot of money showing other people how to do it. And that's what sparked the, I should figure out how people sell. So then I got introduced to a variety of networks to a great guy. You might even know him. Have you ever heard of Marcus Kalki? No. <laughs> no great sales. Tell me about it. Yeah. So I got introduced to him. I paid him a lot of money to spend a day with him. And he showed me stuff that changed the way I thought about salespeople. And I thought, I like this. I like this guy and I like what he teaches. So um, I spent some time with him. Uh, but I decided I wanted to do this on my own. I wanted to get out there. So I, I read a lot. I figured out. Uh, I didn't figure out. Everything I teach, by the way, I'm upfront is stolen, right? Because there's yeah. nothing new under the sun. Everything somebody else has figured out before. So the Zig Ziglers, the David Sandlers, the, the Grant Car all of these people have borrowed from somewhere or something and made it their own. So I'm the same. I've taken from all these different places and figured out with my style and my passion 
and my way of doing things. But it's a psychology. It was learning about transactional analysis, which I was introduced through via Sandler, made me start to challenge things. I'm actually a lawyer by trade, qualified as an attorney, as you'd say in America. So I knew very quickly that process was important. A lawyer isn't interested in the outcome of a trial. He's interested in how he gets there. Because if he does everything right, the outcome should be what he wants. So process and systems were very important to me. And I also knew that everybody lies all the time. That's where I figured that out. And if they're going to lie to their lawyer who's there to help them, they ain't going to tell a salesman the truth. So once you figure these things out and start challenging everything and start to realize that selling isn't about convincing anyone of anything. It's about getting them to discover they need what you have. And all i got to do is ask the right questions. And they're usually uncomfortably tough, not soft, nice, fluffy, little, how does that make you feel? And if I could get you in this car, da, 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 da. So it's challenging. Challenge a sale, another great book. <laughs> Wait, so I, I, my turn now? Go for it, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I'd get in for the American stock. You know, I know I won't get another color. No, that is just dynamite. Listen, you're making my preview real. This is this is a, <laughs> this is where we go from. But okay, so you have that. But this is a challenge, and I'm sure you run into this too, as I do, because I'm in the same camp. I'm going telling people, guys, it's just easy. Ask those tough questions uh, that you know going to hurt in the belly at the beginning. Uh, risk the idea of them saying no. In fact, let them say no. Give them the opportunity. It's okay to say no to me. Do all that stuff. And people will come to you after a while and say, well, that works for you because you're a lunatic, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Hmm. Well, I believe it or not, I, I was when I first started, I was one of those happy, clappy salesmen that wanted to be liked. In fact, ironically, people who have a personality that want to be liked are attracted to things like sales and acting because they need the adulation. And so they love to be the center of attention, which is ironic that you choose a career with a high level of rejection. Yeah, which is very odd. But they, they they love the punishment. And because they have this rail, this sort of roller coaster of a ride, they love it. They think the thrill of the ride and the rush is what they're after. So what I what I started to, to do was, do lawyers behave like that? Do surgeons behave like that? It's like, well, no, they don't because they're professionals. And what is it that professionals do that most salesmen don't? They're emotionally detached. A lawyer... Whilst he cares about what he's doing, at the end of the day, I, I, win or lose, it doesn't matter. As long as I do my job well and do it legally, ethically, and morally, and everything right, and I can't be sued for negligence, whatever happens will happen. I'd like to win, but I'm not betting the house on this. Surgeons are the same. So once you remove the emotional attachment to the outcome and say, I'm only interested in how I get there, selling becomes very easy because I'm not trying to sell anything to anyone. In fact, I'm doing the opposite. There are more reasons for someone not to work with me and there are to work with me. So I'm going to get all those things out of the way first. And if we get through all of those hurdles, whatever's left, it's probably going to be a yes. So I flip it. I don't try and sell. In fact, I spent most of my life trying to get rid of people. I just uh, had a conversation with a company in Australia this morning and the woman said, it sounds like you don't want to work with me. I said, I don't think you need me. She goes, but we do. This is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that works every that works every time. I, that that's one of my it's patented thing. We get to the end, I say, you know what? After listening to this, looks like you're all set. Mm. You don't really even need me. No, and, and you get two responses. They'll either agree with you or they'll fight you. And if they fight you, you're in. Yeah, that's right. And you can even push back after they start fighting. No, no, oh, listen, yeah. I know I know you think you do right now, but really you don't. And then it's even more. <laughs> well, I, I follow up with when they say no, we do, you say, convince me. Oh my gosh. Uh, Chris Stone, we gotta take notes. I'm writing, I'm oh, writing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, man, I, oh wait, it's being recorded. <laughs> oh, Their true. job is to convince you why you should help them. This is what every salesman's gotta remember. They're the one with the problem. The only thing they have is choice of where they spend their money to fix it. But the problem remains. And if they believe you have the solution and you know you do, because why would you be talking to them? I don't talk to people if I don't believe I can help them. So I go in with a mindset that says you should be bloody grateful I'm here. Because if you need me and can convince me to help you, this is the best day of your life. I don't understand why he's the most hated. I love this guy, Dan. I mean, seriously. I mean, these are I mean, Only... if you're a salesperson listening or watching uh, right now. I mean, 
you know, you got to go to UK's most hated sales trainer.com. We're here with Benjamin Dennehy. If you got any questions, comments, we've got viewers, uh, hit us up, um, cold call us live here on Dan Jordan. And, uh, we'll, we'll take, uh, we'll take whatever anybody's got. So that's right. Stuff. Yeah. Only people who are lovable are confident enough to say that they're the most hated. Because again, that's reverse psychology too. And so people, oh, you're not so bad. They'll start telling you, you're really not so bad. I, you know what he's going to say if I tell him he's really not so bad, Chris Stone? Convince me. Convince me. <laughs> <laughs> I am. You're American audience, but I'm naturally a wanker. So it just appeals yeah. to me. But actually, when, when people ask me, how did I come up with the, 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 the title, UK's Most Hated, I, I, I went on LinkedIn. And what I noticed was a pattern. Everybody on LinkedIn who specializes in sales calls himself an expert, a guru, a leader, a professional, da da da. And everything's about look at me, how wonderful I am. And I realized no one wants to be hated. Therefore, that's the space that's open. If I take it, if I own it, I mean, no idiot's going to come along and say, no, I'm more hated. Can't happen. Yeah, but everyone's always going to see I'm better. I'm an expert. I'm more of a genius. No one is ever going to try and challenge me for this position. And if you do, it just looks stupid. Yes. Yeah, so that's so they so there. So the contrary view is always works best. And and uh, it's tough to get people to go there. But it's it's a great space to be because you're by yourself. But mm. you're talking about sales which is great when you're in the sales call and you're you're doing your investigation you're finding out but there's a, a prior to the sales call uh, there's something called outbound marketing there is prospecting uh, your prospecting is a different science in my opinion mm, than is. is the sale uh, talk about that for a minute on how you get yeah. them to the point of the appointment where you can sell exactly so uh, this is very important distinction which I put out one thing's selling, one thing's prospecting, and they're different words because they describe different things. And salespeople can view it. Prospecting is finding someone who may or may not have a problem you can fix, but there's enough there to justify investing more of your time to diagnose if they do need you. That's the sale bit. So prospecting, therefore, is how do I take a human being who may or may not need what I have and get them to feel something about what it is that I fix? So I pose this question all the time and no one ever gets it. In fact, I'll pose it to you. What is the purpose of a prospecting call? To disqualify them. No, that's an outcome. The Okay. This guy's quizzing the DJ here. Okay. The purpose of a prospecting yeah. call is to get – why don't you tell me the purpose ah. of a prospecting call? When you ask this question, you get things like to establish need, to find pain, to, to get an appointment, to get a meeting, to get a sale. All of those are outcomes. They're not the purpose. Just like a trial. The outcome could be guilty, not guilty, hung jury. But that's not the purpose of a trial. I actually do have a one, but it's not what you think. About. My purpose of cold calling, of prospecting, yeah. is, is, is my form of sales training. It's right, for me okay. to get better. That's, that's what good. I use it for. I but get an outcome you. If you're not a sales trainer, that's not a purpose. So we got to yes. what is the fundamental purpose? And it goes back to how do people buy? And this is simple. Human beings never change the way they buy. We buy emotionally and justify intellectually. That doesn't matter who you are or where you are, what it is you're buying and selling. If you emotionally don't want something, it doesn't matter how intellectually brilliant the argument is that you should have it. I get it. Makes sense. But I don't care or I don't want it, or I don't feel I need it. So a prospecting call, the purpose of a prospecting call is to get another human being emotional. I'm phoning up a guy sitting at his desk eating a sandwich. I have no, I don't know anything about him or his world. I just know he's an MD with sales guys. Therefore, there's a good chance he may experience problems I can fix, but I've got to get him to feel that by the end of this call. And so all I do is try to get a guy to go from intellectually acknowledging he has a problem to saying it does piss me off from there to there if i get that i'll get an appointment that's Money. it okay uh, now i've seen the video if i had a real producer here he would put the video up but if i uh given that in lieu of that uh, uh so I've, I've got it here dan do we oh, want to really yeah uh, what video I, I don't even know which clip it's gonna be i so know who knows yeah, yeah. 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 is it the one where he's naked or is there is that the other is one? It the naked one please be the naked one okay. oh, it's this one. Does, 
Does the sound uh, hang, work? Hang on a sec. Um, yeah, let me just uh, let me. Uh, so the point the point sorry. is uh, when you get somebody on the phone, you have to determine whether or not uh, they are going to raise their hand, whether or not they're going to get emotional, whether they have a, a reason yeah. to do this at all. And I don't think anybody does it better than you did on this particular call. And oh, okay, we're going to play. Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, um, I'm going to be honest with you. This is actually a cold call. Uh, would you like to hang up or let me have 30 seconds? Ah, well, look, okay. So let me have 30 seconds. And if you don't want to... You want to stop it? Pause it for a second. Sound fair? Yeah, fine. All right, because he... I saw you wanted to say something. You're, you're commenting on it. No, no, I was going to say, what people don't realize is, is I didn't know when I did this interview with these guys they were going to get me to do a call live. So there was all these guys plus the camera crew. And you don't see it, but I, I was really, I was under pressure here because they yeah. wanted a good recording. And when you do live calling, there are two things going on. First of all, they want you to fail. And secondly, they want you to win. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm there and all I, I thought, well, you can't see it, but I, I know my hands were shaking. And when I watch this, all I see is the things I did wrong, which is fascinating. Isn't right? that interesting? Well, well I see everything I did badly. The reason why I love this and I, I love you in this in this area is when I first met Chris Stone, my producer here, who's awesome, by the way. Uh, if you do anything like this, you got to talk to this guy. World renowned. But uh, Chris actually saw me at a, a live event that I was doing and recorded me. I did a live call right in front of him. And he was like, uh, you know, a holy shlaboli. Uh, who is this guy? And then we started working together. And so you did it better. And it's killing oh, me. Thank you. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, people don't see if I took the shirt off, you'd see all the scar tissue and the bruises and the <laughs> from how long? People never see that, you know. It took me, it took me five years to become an overnight success sort of thing. Yeah. That's terrific. Go ahead and finish it out because the, the beginning of this is really money, Chris. Oh, yeah. All right. So look. I typically get invited in by managing directors of successful and ambitious companies, um, but they have they have the honesty to recognize that perhaps sales is a bottleneck to growth, and so they're probably frustrated that their salespeople maybe are not motivated or reluctant to pick up the phone. Others are worried that perhaps that's not an issue, but when they do, if they listen to them, they sound a bit cringeworthy and they think to themselves, you know what, I probably wouldn't want to meet with that person. Or well, that might, may not be the case. It could be the fact that you're a little concerned they don't qualify hard enough. And as a result, you're running around kissing frogs, meeting the wrong sort of person, and it's having a knock-on effect. I mean, I get the feeling you're probably going to tell me that none of that applies in your world. All right. So, so, well, pause it for a second. Uh, I just want to just for an instructional moment, whoever's going to see this forever, did you notice how slowly he spoke? He wasn't rushing through it. He wasn't trying to get to the end to a question. He slowly and deliberately spoke to the man like a human. And you're naturally a, an upbeat kind of hyper ADD mm. type of guy like me. Yeah, so I'm an actor. And this is what I teach. Salesmen have yes. to be actors. You've got to give the prospect the person. Out. So this is an MD. So an MD, there are two types. Either oh, the we're, we're, we're Americans here. The heck is yeah. an MD? CEO, president. Okay. So there, there, there are two types, either the cut to the chase, ball breaker, get to it, or the one who needs you to be a bit more authoritative, but calm. And so you gather that instantly from how they sound, how they answer the phone. And I could tell the moment he answered, well, the way he spoke far more slower than a lot of them. Well, well it depends. I mean, what, what's the call about? So I slowed down what I was going to say, because it sounded like this is a guy that needed to speak slower to. And do notice how I phrase the question at the end. Yeah, well, so that's, I was going to get to that, but that's money. When he asked the question at the end, it was a negative. It's a negative. It's a positive. It was, you probably are not interested in any of this. Yeah, you got to tell and, me you don't recognize this because they can only say yes or no. If they say yes, great. If they say no, I go in with another question, which you never got to see here because he okay. said, yeah. Uh, so and what, the other thing that I would point out, what do you think's going through the mind of the average salesman when they're given a list of CEOs or presidents to phone? What's going through the mind of the average salesman as that phone's dialing? Well, why don't you tell us? Please don't answer. Please don't answer. Please don't answer. Yes. Wow. wow. 
And what's going through my mind is, you better fucking answer because I ain't wasted my time. And as soon as I get through, I'm his equal. I don't care if he's the CEO of whatever company. He eats, he defecates, and he dies just like me. He may have a flash of suit. But at the end of the day, the mindset of a salesman has to be very, very clear. The people I call on are my equal. I'm not better than them. I'm not worse than them. They're my equal. I will talk to them on the same level. And the moment a CEO hears weakness, hears wimpiness, they go for you because you don't sound like me. And why would I do business with someone that doesn't sound like me? Very why important. Do you think, uh, yeah. Why do you think people are, why do you think salesmen are so scared? What's the, what's the fear? Is that, that they're, that, is it confidence? Is it like, I'm not it's good not enough? Like, it's okay. belief. There are three rules you were taught as a child that no one told you don't apply as a grown up. And they're all given to you to keep you safe. But they're stupid for a grown up. First one is never talk to what? Stranger. Never talk to a stranger. To, did your mom or dad tell you that rule does not apply as a grown up? Dan told his kids that. Right? I, I, I told my, I, that's what I told my children. I go, go out, take some chances today, talk to strangers. Talk Brilliant. to somebody you don't know. But, yeah. but yeah, go on, I'm going to ruin your whole, your whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, keep going. The second one is, it's rude to interrupt. Mm-hmm. And the third one is, if you're asked a question, you better answer. In fact, the moment you were born, you were programmed that if you answer a que- if you're asked a question by anyone older or an authority, you had to give an answer. It wasn't just enough; you had to give an answer. So those three things make the salesman goes to pick up their phone, and at a subconscious level, their mum's screaming at them, "What are you going to say when you get through to him? You better not interrupt him. He's a lot better than you. You better know the answer to his questions." So deep down, they've already psychologically sabotage the call so they go through the motions but they don't want anything to happen it's please don't answer please don't answer please don't. and then they don't get through and they go Whew. and then they fart around for two minutes filling in the crm system will call back in three weeks tried to call pause themselves then they go to the next one and their mum says oh i don't know gotta do it anyway mum and the same thing over and over again they do that 30 times and i think oh bollocks to this i'm off to facebook that is, I mean, such magic. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if, if the, people need to listen to that every day, that little diatribe. Play yeah. on, Chris. That was just money. It always improve sales. That's for certain. It's the heartbeat of the business. So, uh, so yeah, well, so, sorry, I, I didn't catch your name. Oh, it's, it's Benjamin. Sorry, my fault. So can I just ask a quick question? Of those three things, not picking up the phone, perhaps uh, not engaging decision makers or perhaps not sounding like they belong. If you could wave a wand and fix one in your business, which would it be? Yeah, I think it's about activity, actually. Just pause it. I'll go through something. Talking. So what is interesting there, which a lot of people miss, notice that he asked me, what is my name? See, this is the first time he actually got my name. So I never introduce myself. I never give my name or company. Because the moment you pick up the phone to someone and you hear those Fateful words. Oh, hello, is that Benjamin? Yeah, hi, I'm Robert from ABC Company. How are you today? As soon as I hear that, my brain says, oh, sales call. And all the, the all the little tapes on how to get rid of this guy kick in. So I don't do that. I don't give them the opportunity. I do the opposite. I say, this is a sales call. Do you want to hang up? And because people by nature are rebellious and they don't like to be told what to do, particularly the higher up you go, when I say, do you want to hang up? They, without doubt, 95% of the time I go, no. And why it's important is when he asked me what my name was, do you notice how quickly I flicked it back to a question? Whoever asks questions is in control. And he goes, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. I go, oh, sorry, didn't I say? It's Benjamin. So let me ask you a question straight back in. I, so this is money. this is money. Um, I, I, I want to share with the listeners here because I say the exact same thing, but this type of this works even in person. When I walk in on a live cold call, I walk in and say, hey, I'm one of those salesman type characters. Don't I look it? And they'll say yes. And I said, do you want to kick me out? They never say yes. And I don't say, would you like me to leave? I say, do you want to kick me out? Because people, like you said, they're like, oh, you know, that, that's almost threatening that you think that they're that you're you're dangerous enough that they have to kick you out. They don't want to feel like a bad person. This works everywhere. 
You know, if I go to a business event and someone, we start talking, they say, can I give you my card? I say, on one condition. I said, if you give me your card, I'm going to call you. And once you give it, I'm like a vampire. You cannot unrescind the invitation. So you better think carefully. Do you want a sales trainer calling you to discuss your sales people? Because if you don't, keep your card. Oh, that's money. Isn't that and, and, and I get some people say, yeah, no. So you're just doing it out of politeness, social nicety. I'm yeah. not here for social nicety. You give me your card, I'm phoning you. This is why he's the most hated. Now I get, I do that on LinkedIn too. People, hey, it was really nice seeing you there. I, I, we have a profile that matches. I'd love to connect. And I always say, well, sure, give me a call. Yeah. Nobody calls. No. no. Nobody calls because they don't want to connect. They don't want to do that. They no. want to. <laughs> Social niceties. I can't do it all. I'm here to sell, not make That's friends. Right. I got enough friends. I don't and need any more. And that's what we say. So I say there's there's words that you're never allowed to say for my people on a, on a cold call. And that is you're not allowed to say, how are you doing today? Because when you no. say, how are you today? They know automatically, cold call, cold call, and immediately start building up a wall between you. They do. It, and if you so ever do, if, you, if, you, if, if you're on the receiving end of that, how are you today? I always say to every salesman, to say, how are you today? I go, well, actually, my mother died last night. Now, what happens is, is there's this awkward pause, and then to prove they didn't care, they go, oh, sorry. So anyway, the reason you yeah, that, <laughs> and it's like, why ask a question if the answer doesn't actually have any bearing on what's going to happen next? Yeah, you right? see, it's, it's the opposite, Chris mm -hmm. Stone. People think, you know, you're going to be hated and feel like you're mean if you're direct, but it's much nicer not to say, how are you doing today, when you don't care in the first place. Oh, you're putzing <laughs> around. You're, you're, in, you're in essence lying right off the bat. Yeah, you're you're meeting somebody problem. first and lying. Yeah. So it's awful. Let's finish this up just for a little bit because there's a good right. part right here. Talking yeah. to more of the right people. Yeah. Okay. okay. I've, I've had my 30 seconds. Do you mind if we talk for maybe one more minute? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, boom. Um, you can stop it right now. We can end this right now. That guy just became a buyer. Yeah. Right there. He just raised his hand and you piqued his interest. He raised his hand and he said... Yeah, at this point, if you're a salesperson, it's yours to lose. Yeah. <laughs> and and I knew at this point that I just a few more questions and he would invite me in. And you'll notice if you listen to it, I have not asked for a meeting or an appointment in years because I don't even use those words. Those words scare people. They're horrible. What I say, is there any reason you wouldn't invite me in? Now, you can't uninvite someone. <laughs> that so the language so is very, yeah. very subtle. Is there any reason if you if you believe I don't know if I can fix this for you, but if you believed I could and you saw the solution and believed it could help you, is there any reason you wouldn't invite me in to explore that? Which the logical answer is well, no. And that's that's the meeting there. And then I go, okay, I give a command then. I follow up with have you got your diary? Yes. Yeah, and it's a it, command. Have you got your diary? And they go, uh, yeah. I go, what date are you looking at? It's another command. And I'm pushing right. them, pushing them. And then I, they finally lock it in. And then I give them a chance to bail. Look, one last question. You're not going to hang up the phone and think, oh, my goodness, I've just booked an appointment with the sales trainer, are you? And they go, no, 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 no. I, 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 I'm they never back out once they've done that hook, line, and sinker. No yeah. begging, no pleading, no just in the area. Can I pop in for a quick chat? I just need 15 minutes. Have some dignity. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so I'm listening to you. I think it's awesome. Uh, it all is good. How, what, what's a good company? What's a good uh, lead for you? What's a good kind of company size-wise that you like to work with? What's your, your best type of uh, prospect? Ah. Or what best company you like to work with? Well, I, I want to work with people that got teams of at least more than 10 salespeople, ideally, although I do work with smaller. But the bigger the team, the more we can get traction. I need to work with a successful and ambitious company, but one that's committed to selling more, but ethically. You see, the problem is, is most every company, they say we care about our – it's all bollocks. It's all marketing yeah. spiel. At the end of the day, most don't care how you get across the line. They just want you to get across the line, which – I think it's the worst way. That's almost like lawyers saying it doesn't matter how you get the outcome, just as long as you get the outcome. That would be seen as utterly unprofessional and utterly unethical, and you wouldn't want to work with lawyers who behave like that. Salespeople have the same reputation. 
And it's, I don't do that. My goal is I don't care whether or not you get a sale. I care to how you got to the point where you didn't win it or you won it. What is it that you did? Because if you know what you did, you can repeat it. Just like the Ford production line. You got to be able to repeat it. It's no point winning because of luck or chance. It's got to literally be, I did this, 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 and this, and this is why this happened. So I look for companies that want to systemize selling. It's almost like, why is McDonald's so successful? Because every McDonald's you go to in the world, you're going to get exactly the same meal. That's so, why it works. Consistency and process, not fly by the seat of your pads. I don't know why I'm good. I just am. Well, that's no good to me. How do I, how do I, how do I build a model on that? Okay. And so, okay. So now uh, when you come into a company, mm. uh, so you, you come into a company, you're working with them for a little while. Yeah. Uh, is there immediate attrition uh, with some people yeah. that aren't going to buy in and then more people yeah. recruit? Yeah. Well, we, before I even get to that stage, I normally will have met with the CEO yes, uh, and the president. And I tell the president in the first five minutes of our interaction, I say, look, before we start, shall I tell you the three reasons you're not going to hire me? That and no one ever says, no, don't tell me. So I say, okay, the first reason is I'm bloody expensive. So when we get to the fees, but if you don't cry or wince, then I've done something wrong. Secondly, do you know how much time it's going to take to get good at what I do? This isn't a two-day program. This is going to be months, maybe even into a year or two of hard work, consistent work. You're not just going to get this. So that's the other three. You're not going to want to invest the time. And the third reason is this. Some of your guys are probably going to quit because they'd rather do what they're doing than change, even if it's better for them. So let me ask you a question. Let's assume we decide we can work together and you want to work with me. Are any of those reasons, are there any of those going to be a reason why we can't? And if we're going to fight about any of those things, I'm going to do it in the first five minutes, not at the end of the meeting, because I'd rather leave at the end of that conversation. No one gets qualified. I'm never going to pay you your fees. Then fine, I'm leaving. That was easy. Yeah, so, And this is, I, I can imagine, this is the same uh, skill and methodology that you're presenting right now to the CEO that they would, uh, that you're going to train their salespeople to act that same way. I work with some currency traders, Wolf of Wall Street stuff, right? And mm -hmm. funniest thing, um, they deal with finance directors, you know, very serious, proper people. And uh, whenever you get in front of these and you start, so I walk in looking like this, right? So the first thing you get is an utter look of contempt. In fact, when I turned up at their offices, because I did this over Zoom, when I turned up at their offices, I was mistaken, first of all, as a delivery man, and then I was mistaken for the painter. So no, I'm the highly, I, I, I'm the really expensive sales trainer. And, and then I get in front of a room full of guys that are all suited and they look like, they look smart. And then there's this idiot. And people look at me with contempt. And then I start to show them what it is that I'm going to teach and what I'm going to do. And you get some people say, no, no, Benjamin, that won't work on the sorts of people we sell to. We sell to serious grown-ups. Yes. And then it's like, well, how did I get here? Because your CEO ex is exactly the sort of people you sell to. How is it then that this, this is here? And then they say, well, uh, well yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. See, it's not what you sell, it's how you sell. And that's what most salesmen don't get. And if you, and if you it's, everyone sells the same shit, just branded differently. Yeah, so that's never going to help. So it's how you sell that distinguishes you. So I teach you how to be different, how to act, behave, speak differently. And that's why it works. But it's not easy. So am I going to have to dress like you? No, no, I um, I get away with it because I generally don't give a rat's ass what people think now. That took a while to get there, but I like it. When I walk into a room and I get that look of contempt, do you know what I think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, fe you're feeding off of that. Because um, they can't that's, that's stay there. If they think I'm an idiot, if they think I can't sell, if they think this guy seriously is a bit of a joke, all their defense walls go... <laughs> And then I just get into the routine. Sorry, um, I don't have a pen. It's Columbo. Yeah, all day Columbo. Long. Yeah, yeah. It's all day yeah. Long. And so I've watched all his movies over and over and over again. And you realize that's why he's what he's doing, but he's on it. Yeah. And it's the questions and he traps them with their own logic. They can't get out of it. Say so prospects are the same. But 
I only sell to people that need what I have, and we get there together. There's no, no one ever has their arm twisted by me. In fact, if anything, they got to convince me to work with them. All right. So somebody wants to get a hold of you. What do they do? Obviously, LinkedIn is the best place for me. I don't really use any other form of social media because, well, they're closing them all anyway, aren't they? So yeah. um, <laughs> LinkedIn, LinkedIn, or I've got my website. Don't judge me on what it looks like because I built it. It deliberately looks a bit tacky. But it's UK's most hated sales trainer.com. That or LinkedIn is the best two places to find me. Or yeah. I've got a YouTube channel. Just type in UK's most hated. And here's, and here's the thing. Uh, if you do want to reach him and reach out to him, he's going to reply. He's going to respond. You're going to get a call. You're going to be in a sales environment. So be prepared for that. And don't be offended if it happens. It's the best. Actually, this is actually another caveat. Uh, because I get so many people approach me, I charge people just to talk to me because I've got to filter out the tire kickers real quick. The ones that don't pay were just wanting to bend my air. That's exactly right. Yeah. Bend my air. He's going to yeah. bend my air. So bend you're, you're, air. you're where, are, where are you living right now? So I'm in a, I'm in a, a town. It's not a city, but it's a town okay. called Bournemouth on the south coast of the United Kingdom, right down at the bottom. If you look hard enough, if you squint, you can see France. So obviously we don't do that a lot. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Neither do I. <laughs> uh, the, the, and, and, and my, and Daniel, je m'appelle Daniel Jourdan. C'est français, hein? My dad was from Paris. Ah, yeah. sacre bleu. Yeah, he hates the place. Anyway, so, yeah. the, <laughs> so, um, and even in a small town like that, you're huddled down at home, Quarantine down every time we go out, we got to take our papers because it's almost got a bit uh World War Two ish. It's all what type crazy. of papers? What do you mean? No, papers? I'm kidding. I'm oh, okay. kidding. I'm slightly over egging it, but okay. we'll get to the point where uh, you'll have to prove who you are. I suspect. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. we're in lockdown and we will be, they reckon, until at least March now. It's crazy. So you're working on uh, it is crazy. It's a it's a uh, yeah, Chris Stone tells me not to say what I really feel about it. And so well, I think it. it is a real Chinese virus because we're all communists. It's now. a commie plot. The yeah. whole thing is. We're I, all, I call, it, I call a, it the commie virus, but I. Uh, what's happened? Uh, I refuse to wear the muzzle. I won't do it. So I go. So here's my secret. Mm. Here's my secret. Now, I mean, here we have a, uh, in my area, we have a lot of. Uh, uh, the Mexican supermarkets and Mexican the immigrants are fair in this. But if you go to those places, they don't make you wear the muzzle. Oh, right. But, yeah. So I shop only. I have more in common with uh, an illegal alien uh, visiting our country who wants to work than I do with a third generation American with a college degree. Great. It's, it's a funny <laughs> world. It's different. It's a very different place. But how is the, uh, how has this affected your business? I mean, obviously you're doing a lot ah, virtually. Well, I, right? I'm the opposite. So uh, I, I, this is like a gold rush, and I'm selling spades. Yeah. The only people that made money during the gold rush were the people <laughs> selling stuff to people who wanted to hunt for gold. That's so right. I had never considered doing anything online prior to COVID. And I'd just come from London, literally before the lockdown. And I said, and then we got locked down. And I said to my wife, I said, well, what do I do? All my contracts drew up because it couldn't do it in-house. And I said, is anyone going to pay to listen to me do a webinar? And I'd never done a webinar. I'd never, I had to figure out how. I actually had to pay somebody to do a PowerPoint for me because I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought, will it work? Well, long story short, I've done 26 online boot camps. Over 400 people last year went through them. The reviews have been amazing. Um, it was one of my most profitable years. That's money. So that's that's how it works, guys. That's how, you know, and it's the salesperson mentality that allows business people to pivot that quickly. That's why the CEOs are always the big salespeople. The owners of the companies were always salespeople because that's the mentality that it takes to make it now and whatever happens in the future. Uh, and you've got to take a risk. And I'll be up for I was scared because I said to my wife, if I advertise this on LinkedIn and no one buys, how does that look for a sales trainer that can't even sell people onto his course? And I remember sitting there debating it. And I thought, well, do I do? I've spent ages building up this brand. I thought, what do I care? I don't even know anyone on LinkedIn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did it, and the first one filled, the second, and they all filled. They've been oversubscribed every time. 
We're, we're going to have to talk this. online. We'll bring this to the States too. Listen, I can't tell you how I have, you know, you, you overshot uh, what I, how good this would, would be just to talk oh, to you. Well, I'll, I'll I think you're that. terrific. And Dennis, uh, Daryl Prale told us about you. Aha, uh -huh, yes, he's an honorary American, as I like to say. Yes, yes. And so uh, he's a terrific guy. And any friend of Daryl is a friend of mine. And I love Daryl. Yeah, I, I yeah. love Darryl. You do we, work with that company, Vanilla Soft, no? Well, he keeps saying he's going to get me in, but I'm not sure the Canadian. I said their Canadian money wouldn't really be able to buy real yeah. pounds. So he, he said the same thing to me, too. We got to gang up on him. But I think you're terrific. And uh, Chris Stone, once again, I mean, is this guy money? I mean, this is all thing he sets up. I mean, Benjamin, absolutely. Hey, listen, I just, you know, I was just looking for somebody to take a breath so I can just like interject, oh, but sorry. I just, I'm letting the magic happen. Uh, Benjamin, no, thank you I was you trying so much. to say how good yeah. you are. Benjamin Denny, oh. is not Chris Stone the best producer on the, on the planet? He's brilliant. You're right up there with uh, Daryl's. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, okay. that's right. He's, look, uh, he's got a uh, he's got a curtain though. Yeah, he, yeah. He, and Daryl spends a lot more on hair products. And, that's uh, right. <laughs> oh, you should see you should see my he hair product. Out. <laughs> Listen, all these good ideas that you get out there, everybody who's watching this thing, it's all great. But if you don't put into action, it's a bunch of garbage. So yeah. get out there, pick up the phone, and just go get them today. Knock them dead.